On breakfast this morning, celebrations in the card across Senegal as Alliance of Teranga have been crowned Afghan 2021 champions. We take a look at what was a historical night for African football. And President Buhari has been asked to rescind his decision to grant some security agencies access to the private data of mobile telecommunication subscribers in Nigeria. Why? We also have analysis of the latest headlines of the pages of Nigerian newspapers this morning on The Breakfast. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a brand new week and we're ready to give you all information, of course, interesting conversations right here uh, on what is a leading breakfast show on television in Nigeria. My name is Kofi Bartels. Um, before we get into our major discussions, uh, time to look at what has been trending uh, online and discussions going around all over the country and around the world. Um, quite a few stories that we've been monitoring. Let's start with one very sad one. I'm sure you may have heard about the story of a trapped Moroccan boy. It was one that gripped you know, the conscience, the hearts, and the thoughts of people around the world with a lot of television networks beaming their cameras on that, um, that incident. Uh, this Moroccan boy was trapped um, in a well for five days. Um, and there were hopes that he would be rescued. You can see images of uh, the rescue operation right there um, uh, in Morocco. Uh, it was it was really really gripping. A young boy trapped in that well, located somewhere north in Morocco, for five whole days, and he died before rescuers were able to reach him late on Saturday and retrieve his body. Um, Footage was posted on social media showing the scene after his body was recovered uh, with hundreds of rescue workers, hundreds of rescue workers distraught. And on Lucas also as well, distraught, gathering at the site. You can see the look, um, uh, you know, very, very, very sad. And of course, chanting to their gods and, and, and shining the flashlights of their phones in the air. You know, really, really sad. This young boy uh, by name Ryan Arwam, aged five, was said to have fallen into the well uh, at his village in Igran in the hills of uh, um, Chef Shawin on Tuesday, triggering a huge rescue effort uh, that engrossed the countries. And uh, we told the rescuers finally reached him late on Saturday after removing much of the adjacent hillside. You can see the excavators and all that there. You know, they had to remove a lot of this adjacent hillside and delicately um, tunneling a horizontal passage into the well. They had to go down. Then they had to now dig sideways to get into the well to try and get that that, that young boy. Uh, the well was only about 45 centimeters wide at the top and uh, tapered as it dropped to about 32 meters at the bottom where Ryan was trapped, making it impossible for rescuers to descend directly into the well. I mean, it would have been a straightforward thing. Why don't they drop themselves into the well and get this boy out of the well simply? But because of the, you know, the shrinking width of this particular well at the bottom where the boy was. They had to dig the sides of the hill and then get a horizontal tunnel into the well. But what have Nigerians been saying about this and how Nigerians have been reacting to what is a very sad story? Um, a lot of Nigerians have been saying, we need to learn from the Moroccan situation and experience with the rescue efforts and the speed with which the rescue efforts uh, took place and the coordination of the rescue efforts. Um, interesting to see you know, a lot of efforts around with all the equipment. Uh, a lot of inference has been drawn with what happened in Ikoi with the building collapse and um, Nigerians really asking uh, for the government to do something uh, about this. Um, let's move on to another one we've been watching. Uh, this, uh, Nigerians in Ukraine being urged by the federal government uh, to be cautious. Uh, this follows um, a bit of unrest between the Ukrainian government and the Russian government uh, with President Vladimir Putin uh, ordering his, uh, his troops to get to the border uh, of Russia with Ukraine. Don't forget, they've had a history of um, a tense relationship since 
the invasion of uh, Ukraine and the takeover of Crimea by Russia. And uh, it's only been, you know, a matter of time. People have been speculating what's going to happen between two countries. The tension has always been there, you know, the, even before the Crimean situation. Well, with the federal government of Nigeria um, um, monitoring this, it's told its citizens in that country, in that Eastern European country, um, to be careful, uh, giving them a security warning. This is not something we're used to. Um, last week, a uh, student union body of an African country in Ukraine issued a warning to its members in Ukraine and Nigerian Senate on the federal government saying why hasn't the federal government of Nigeria said anything about the situation for Nigerians at least to give them a sort of a security warning and all that and uh, thankfully this week um, or over the weekend the Nigerian government did what the uh, citizens had been asking about, which is why haven't you told your citizens in Ukraine about the situation and given them tips or at least a security warning or update? I mean, some people also recollected the fact that uh, the United States of America had over the years um, given several security updates for very, what we may consider in Nigeria, you know, minute security breaches or um, concerns. And we would always hear that the American government, the British government, or some other European governments are giving their countries a, a warning, an advisory, a travel advisory, probably. You know, so this, this is some good news coming from the federal government of Nigeria. The fact um, that, uh, you know, uh, an advisory has been given a warning to Nigerians in Ukraine. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's a positive step. Um, in reaction to what Nigerians had been asking for. Another one we've been monitoring, um, a very interesting and funny story. Let's just show you a picture uh, coming from uh, uh, social media. It's something that uh, I have never seen before. Um, picture this, a male wearing high heels, what some Nigerians would call koi koi. Uh, and this is not just an ordinary male. This is a pastor. A video of a pastor wearing heels went viral online. And it's, it seems from the pictures you can see it's not a one-off. It's not probably he was going to preach somewhere and his wife took his shoes or his shoes went bad or some thieves stole his shoes and he said, Wifey, please, can I borrow your shoes? I don't have any shoes to wear. I can't go uh, you know, barefoot. No, it seems that this is something he does. You can see the picture on the left and the right. He is still wearing high heels. Now, this seems a bit awkward for some people. Um, and the video of him preaching, you know, in high heels. And the reaction is coming, you know, some thought, some taking it as a funny thing. Um, some, you know, saying, hey, this is uh, um, uh, maybe a, a mental issue. Some looking at uh, from it uh, from a funny point of view. One one commenter uh, uh, on social media said, uh, "On the hill there's a cross, and on that cross there is love for me." You know, so um, uh, probably you know using thing upon with the word hill. I've never seen anything like. I don't know if you have. You can send your comments to us on uh, the uh, Plus TV social media pages. It's quite uh, quite strange indeed. We haven't seen anything like that. A male pastor in heels. I wonder what the members of the church will think when they see him every Sunday. It's, it's bizarre, really. Um, it's bizarre. Is there no way in the Bible where it says that a man shouldn't wear a woman's clothing and a woman shouldn't wear a man's thing? I don't know. You know, that debate has been there for some time. You know, uh, should men wear what women wear? Should women wear what men wear? That's why some denominations do not allow their uh, female members to wear trousers because that is what men are supposed to wear. Okay, let's go over to a neighboring country, Cameroon, where there were scenes of jubilation. But the jubilation was not majorly in Cameroon. It was all happening. The party was all happening in Dakar, um, Senegal, and other parts of Senegal. After that country and its national team, the Lions of Teranga, won for the first time the African Cup of nations, wild scenes of jubilations um, as the captain of that team, Koulibaly, lifted the Afghan trophy high into the skies of the Yaoundé night and celebrated. You can see the pictures there. And of course, the likes of uh, Edward Mendy, the goalkeeper from Chelsea, uh, Koulibaly himself, uh, defender from Napoli. You have Gay of PSG. You have um, uh, uh, Mane of Liverpool. These are world-class players for this team. And they have been the most consistent 
African national team at the Nations Cup in the past few editions, always getting close to the semifinals, and I think they've done one final recently, but could not quite win this trophy. We can go back to the days of El Haj Diouf and the coach of this particular team, who was a captain of that famous Senegalese team that conquered the defending champions, France, in the 2002 World Cup in Japan and Korea. Yes, indeed. That year, this particular team made it all the way to the final stages of the African Cup of Nations, um, but they could not win that tournament. Famously beating Nigeria, and on that note, they announced themselves uh, as having arrived on the African stage as a powerhouse in African football, and indeed shocked the entire world by beating the defending champions, France, in the opening match of the 2002 World Cup. Well, they've been able to come full circle now by winning their first major trophy um, for the national senior men's national team. Let's look at the highlights and the footage of this uh, epoch-making event, or this historical event, and we'll be right back. And uh, Ismail Assar joining in as well. It's a big tie, the opening three minutes, as uh, Mane tries to enhance his reputation at this competition. This might be an opportunity. Is there a penalty? What's Victor go? And an early penalty here for Senegal. A penalty now. And it is Senegal who missed a wonderful save from Abu Gabal again. Inasa will take the corner. Definition of a complete player. And it was almost impossible for the to get past him. He was from a rare breed of loyal footballers. And the, the options. Back post, a wedge, high ball, keeper. Wow, congratulations to Senegal. Um, they almost botched it there with uh, uh, Sadio Mane throwing that penalty away. My, they were lucky. They were lucky because the, um, the Egyptians also had their chances to win the, the, the game. You know, a few clear chances, but clearly it was Senegal who were at the top uh, of that match. Missing chance after chance after chance, and one began to think and one began to wonder, is this one of those games where a team misses all its chances and ends up losing the game. But congratulations to them. They finally made it um, uh, to uh, that elusive title of African champions. Very interesting. And um, of course, the build up to this final game was quite uh, uh, high. The tension was high. The interest was high, not just in Africa, but across the world, especially in Europe, because of the involvement of the Liverpool stars, Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah. And uh, we could not help but tack this the Salah versus Mane final. And uh, it, they delivered. They delivered spectacularly. Uh, both teams went at each other, even towards the closing stages of the game. None of them played safe. None of them played defensively. They all went out to try and win this game. And it, could, it was clear to see how tired both sides were because they had run themselves rugged off the pack, you know, trying to win this tournament. Congratulations to Senegal um, having been crowned for the first time champions of Africa. Well, that's it for our trending segment right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our the press is up next. Upunabo in Kutaria, a public affairs analyst, will join us in a few minutes. Stay with us.